right, so let's talk about the big story of the day, which is Vladimir Zelensky giving an interview with the Financial Times and where the Ukrainian army stands right now as it compares to what's happening with the Russian army and where all of those weapons are going that you are paying for in Ukraine. So let's put this up here on the screen. This is Vladimir Zelensky in an interview with the Financial Times, by the way, which is read by a very narrow group of people who read the Financial Times, wouldn't you say? Um, and he says, we are inferior in terms of equipment and therefore we are not capable of advancing. We are going to suffer more losses and people are my priority. So let's unpack that. We are inferior in terms of equipment and therefore we are not capable of advancing. So what he goes on to ask for in this article is what well, we need more weapons Okay, we need continued weapons and we need to retake the eastern region of Ukraine, the the territorial integrity of Ukraine. So we're going to need we need to take over Crimea. We need to take over the Donbass region. We need our Ukraine back is basically what he's saying. Which, uh, that's not going to happen. No, I mean, that is kind of a foregone conclusion that nobody really has the firepower to take that back. And I've been watching this morning, I was watching CNN to figure out how they are presenting this. Um, and so these regions of the Donbass region and the whole sort of eastern seaboard, it's not a seaboard, it's not a but, seaboard. It's totally uh, the whole eastern region, the border yeah. of a Ukraine. A little part of it is a seaboard at the bottom near Odessa, but yeah. I just, yeah, okay. Um, so that whole Eastern region, you know, the way CNN has the graphic is it's all like colored in red and the key at the bottom says Russian forces present. Not like that's been lost, that's not anymore under Ukrainian authority, that now sort of is under, it's just, they are present. They're, They're present. They're present there, right? And I mean, presumably so are like squirrels, but... <laughs> This is how they want to present it where, and, and again, I, I don't want to say that like I'm rooting for this to happen, but I want us all to grasp reality because if our tax dollars are going to send more weapons, which will result in more people dying, I don't want that. I want us to have a, a grasp of what's actually happening so that, it, you know, if he, what, what he's saying here is his priority is his people, then it's time to stop losing people, right? right. So... And we can unpack that a little bit further if we wanted to. I don't want to dwell too much on it. But, I mean, the people of the Donbass region have been attacked for eight years. It's been absolute devastation for those people. And you see video after video after video of liberation. I mean, fathers reunited with their sons after so many years, finally, in this region. So, And shelling continues. Again, so here's a video, actually, I want to show you from uh, just the past two, I think, past 24 hours. Um, and this is a convent uh, in an area that was heavily, uh, heavily fortified by Ukrainians, um, Russian forces advanced. Now, this convent is beautiful. And the, the worry was... It really is. Look at that on the river. It really is. And so what the worry was that this was going to be destroyed. Uh, uh, retreating, surrendering, or retreating Ukrainian soldiers have been setting fire to some of these historic landmarks. So the concern was that this was going to be destroyed. So now what's so fascinating what happened here is that as these Ukrainians were, about 80 of them were holed up in this region, according to Eva Bartlett, she explains that 80 of them were, were there. And then the Ukrainians from the other side bombed the bridge. Okay, they bombed the bridge. And uh, we'll show you the bridge here in a second. But they bombed the bridge and it's actually, the, the bridge is now gone, basically so that those forces would be forced to stay on that side of the water and fight. Well, they didn't. So instead, what happened was they actually, here's the bridge, they they actually threw down their weapons and they swam across and the Russians let them retreat. They didn't fire upon them. It looks uh, swimmable, yeah. right? So, That's doable. So they, they literally, uh, they bombed their own bridge and they forced them to swim across and they surrendered. But that part was, uh, was taken care of. Well, we don't know who the... You have a lot of misplaced modifiers in that sentence. Okay. You had three days, and I'm not sure who bombed who and who left who. But what we think, according to our sources, right, is that there were some internal forces inside Ukraine that wanted those forces that were still at the compound to fight. 
um, and they didn't want to. And this tracks with how many reports we're getting of Ukrainian soldiers who just are laying down their weapons and saying, I'm not going to do this. And now recall that so many of them were inscripted into the military when they didn't want to be, when uh, civilians were allowed to flee Ukraine when the conflict began. Men of fighting age were not, right? But just because you are a man of fighting age, I think it's 65 and older, does not a soldier make. Right. Uh, so Vanessa B on Twitter, an excellent journalist who I sat down with uh, just uh, two days ago and uh, interviewed her. She just tweeted this and she said, if Zelensky lets go of his NATO backers, he is on his own. The Ukrainian armed forces do not support him. Thousands surrendering, thousands killed and injured. Azov do not respect him and some have threatened to kill him. This is the reason he is not negotiating peace. They do not respect him and he's continuing to ask for weapons. So he knows, look, if, if NATO is abandoned, we walk away from NATO, we are going to have to either fight till the last, because no, I'm not going to be able to have a coalition arm, uh, government after this. The Azov Battalion, the, the eastern region of the country, does not support him. They laughed in his face when he went and met with them. Yes. Uh, to his credit, he went and said, look, I'm your president, and they laughed in his face. Um, so he doesn't have, and again, they've been threatening to kill him. They've been threatening, they've been surrendering like crazy. They're sending out videos saying, hey, they don't even supply us with weapons. So let's keep sending them weapons then. All of these weapons that we're sending them. Wait, who is, again, the they? <laughs> Who is the they that's not supplying us with weapons? They meaning the, who's making videos that say they. Well, the don't. videos we've shown here on the show, I don't want to yes. retread everything we've done here, but the, the videos of Ukrainian soldiers in the eastern part of the country who've been surrendering, releasing right. videos okay. saying they meaning the government of Ukraine, Zelensky or whomever. Right. Okay. It's not fun getting weapons to them in the field. appropriately. So it really, which is garbage. I mean, the, the Western media is doing these men a disservice, right? Because they're not trained for this. They were kept behind to fight for something maybe they don't even ideologically align with. And they're putting them, we're putting them in more and more dangerous positions by putting guns in that there are reports that the guns are not really great not super high tech. It's sort of the overflow that Western governments had in storage, right? And so we don't do them any service by posting all of these news stories online saying, look how scrappy they are. They're so, you know, they're winning. They uh, are fighting for what they believe in. When we see in reality, a lot of them are not, right? A lot of them don't want to. And that's dangerous for them if we prop them up in this way because we have this need to believe that Russia is losing. So we just got some breaking news a few minutes ago from the New York Times. So Philip, take my laptop screen here, if you will, because the U.S., this is from the New York Times. U.S. lacks a clear picture of Ukraine's war strategy, officials say. Um, intelligence agencies know far more about Russia's military, even as the Ukraine, as the United States ships billions of dollars in weapons to the Ukrainians. So let's just keep sending them weapons then. While Americans can't pay their rent, we're just continuing to funnel them weapons week after week after week. I know you think about like the $40 billion story from a few weeks ago, but it's still, that's just one, that's just one piece of this. Every week, every week, we're sending millions upon millions of dollars that are separate from the $40 billion to Ukraine. Here's just a sample of the weapons that we've been sending. Here's a list of the weapons we've been sending to Ukraine on your screen here. Uh, we don't have to go through all of them, but you can see javelins. You you recognize some of the, you see the ammunition there, you see the guns, you see the shotguns, you see the, uh, uh, you know, the MGs, you see a, a whole bunch of uh, different, and these are just a, a small amount, stinger missiles, etc. Right. And here's how the Washington Post uh, talks about some of these weapons going there. Flood of weapons to Ukraine raises fear of arms smuggling. Oh, where have we heard that before? Clayton? Right. Well, we heard it on CNN. Here's what CNN had to say about this. Right. No, I mean, learning our lesson from wars past. Oh, oh, oh right. Exactly. Well, yes, when we, we send weapons into these regions, into Al-Qaeda hands uh, and others. Afghanistan, exactly. uh, Saudi Arabia, these things happen when you flood countries with weapons and then don't have a way to track them. So this was this this was CNN a few weeks ago. Remember, this could I couldn't believe that CNN actually did this story it says what happens to weapons sent to Ukraine? The U.S. doesn't really know. And here's what CNN said, even in this piece. Um, you know, we have fidelity for a short time. 
But when it enters the fog of war, we have almost zero, said one source briefed on U.S. intelligence. It drops into a big black hole and you have almost no sense of it at all after a short period of time. Okay, and even the New York Times then, this week, admitting the disaster of our sending weapons to Ukraine. So New York Times has been doing a couple stories, the one we just showed you a second ago and, and this one uh, earlier this week. Potent weapons reach Ukraine faster than we know how than they know how to use them. That's amazing. Yes, and it's also extremely dangerous for people who don't know what they're doing to just be flooded with guns. You know, you have to think about all the media told us how Ukraine's just like us. You know, they are sort of metropolitan, especially Kiev, European place. And you think of people like that all of a sudden having been surrounded by guns when they don't know how to use them or being sent out into places where they need guns and they don't have them. This just doesn't seem like a recipe for success. And it's, you know, who is it? Who is it helping? Well, it's not helping anyone because they're they're not even figuring out how to use them. Here's how Intel Republic reported it. Um, the New York Times admits advanced Western weapons are reaching Ukrainians unable to understand or use them. This is amazing. One Ukrainian soldier said it's like being given an iPhone 13 and only being able to make phone calls. Most of these systems take months to learn to operate, years to train or effectively combat. Think about that for a second. And here's my favorite part of the New York Times piece by, so they pulled out that piece, but here's my favorite part of this New York Times piece. I'm gonna read it here. It may seem like a perfect choice to help make better use of the anti-tank gun built in 1985. It can see targets at night and transmit their distance, compass heading and GPS coordinates. Some soldiers learned enough to operate the tool, but then rotated elsewhere in recent days, leaving the unit with an expensive paperweight. Quote, I've been trying to learn how to use it by reading the manual in English and using Google Translate to understand it, Sergeant Piskanka says. Well, we saw images of Lloyd Austin on a Zoom call. Can't he just bring him up and say, can you tell me how to use this, please? I mean, it's unbelievable. So we have this idea, I think, in Congress anyway, that we're just sending all of these these weapons and they know how to use them. Right. Do they think maybe. that or do know. they I'm just trying to give are, them the benefit of the doubt? Do maybe. they just not care? I mean, let us know in the chat. Do you guys think what do you guys think? Do we actually believe they know how to use these things when we're sending them to them? Or are we are we just supplying money to military industrial complex and we really don't give a rat's ass where this stuff winds up? Or are we so disconnected from the fact that guns and acts violence on our entire country? but we'll solve a problem in another country. We do not dare to think these two are, things are related, that people who are not trained to have guns maybe shouldn't have them, right? People who are not qualified to have guns maybe shouldn't have them. Mm -hmm. There should be some like standard of, I don't know, certification or something. You shouldn't just flood places <laughs> with weapons. Well, you think, but it, that's, the, that's the way we do it. We flood these weapons and then they come back. To, we end up fighting against these guys. We end up t you know, fighting against these weapons eventually in the hands of, in the hands of terrorists in other times. And so Ukraine, uh, right. here's, here's how the Toronto Star puts it. Take a look at this, the front page of the Toronto Star. Ukraine is getting rockets and tanks from the West, but frontline soldiers scrounge for bullets. So they're getting these weapons in Ukraine, and but the frontline soldiers can't get their hands on the actual bullets. Here's the Toronto Star even closer. This is how they sum it up. Ukraine has what the Global Organized Crime Index in 2021 called one of the largest arms trafficking markets in Europe. Experts have called for greater accountability and tighter controls over weapons shipments, in part to ensure that they are not diverted to the black market or for personal profit of, pub or, uh, of public officials. But here we go, guys. The moment you've been waiting for. Yes, these weapons are hitting the black market in a big, big way. So take a look at your screen. This is black market website of Javelins. The starting price for Javelins from the United States military is $30,000. You can buy a Javelin. That's the starting bid to buy one of these. And the weapons on these websites are, it's not just javelins, it's all manner of arms that are being sold for cash. As soon as they're getting them, in many respects, they're putting them right up on these websites on the black market in order to sell these things. Glocks, javelins, stingers, you name it. There they are, available for you to buy if you want.
That's amazing. $30,000. Thirty thousand dollars on the dark web. This is where you. I mean, so that's not a lot if you are a drug cartel, right? No, it's not a lot. I mean, exactly thirty thousand dollars. That's like that's like going out to lunch money but for yes for terrorist organizations and. I mean, it's infuriating on so many levels. I just want to kind of get back to the idea though that American taxpayers who are you know are working so hard right now and we're going to get to inflation here in a little bit on the show your tax dollars you're being told that this is to uphold your democratic values and these weapons are get are landing there and these guys know they're not going to fight they don't stand a chance against the russians so they're just going to sell them on the dark web thirty thousand dollars forty thousand dollars that'll sustain them for a long time they're going to sell our american weapons you would hope right if someone has the wherewithal to do something like that and they are i mean think about the kind of person who would do this right who i, I can't even I, actually i hope so you know what i hope so we were so fucking stupid to send this shit to these people and the and congress didn't listen to their constituents Right, Congress, people calling up, flooding their phones, like, please do not send this money. Do not send these weapons. Do not vote for this. What about a stimulus package? What about Build Back Better? Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to uh, any of the stuff we've talked about? Yes. Lowering prescription drug prices, uh, any of that? Nothing. And so, and in some ways, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy because these guys are such, you know, freaking morons. Uh, maybe I'm not too happy. I'm just so I'm actually more furious and angry when you look at this and you see that and like the people are joking about it. They're sitting in American Humvees. I mean, and I just around. think that. Yeah, I don't know if someone is so disenfranchised then they figured out how to sell a weapon because they don't know how to use it. Right. Um, and it's not just one person. It's happening all over Ukraine. I mean, but this is those weapons will end up in the hands of someone who does know how to use it and cause death of innocent people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that there's no. I, I mean, well, it's something just, something that pisses me. Off. Go ahead, Phil. What Sorry, something that pisses off? me off is this isn't this isn't new. Right. This, we've been doing this like like you even pointed out like in Afghanistan like this has been going on for for as long as we've been you know like I guess selling weapons like we know that they get out there they get into the black market. That we, we know we can't control them once they're out there and we still continue to do it. And then we act surprised, turn those weapons against us. It just, yeah. it just blows my mind. I think, it, yeah. And I think we'll, we'll get to probably why they don't care in just a moment. Uh, because, you know, on the money side, I mean, they, they know that they can just replenish these things and just continue the money cycle over and over and over again to make as much money as possible. Yes. I mean, it's incredibly infuriating. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.